Tom and Josh here. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe! And we're here! Whoa! Welcome everyone to the 72 Pin Connector Podcast. Uh, the only podcast where we talk mostly about food than <laughs> video games. <laughs> With us today, uh, we've got Josh, who is manning the stream for us. Thank you, Josh. Uh, hello. You, you're a gentleman and a uh, scholar. Do my best, um, sir. Do my best. <laughs> of course, we always have the illustrious battle hardened warrior, Adam. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I don't know about uh, any of that. But, 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 but no you're totally indeed you're totally I am battle here. hardened. <laughs> I mean, look at I that. Think look at if that anybody's look. battle hardened, it is you guys. Us. Uh, we'll get into oh, that yeah, good point. <laughs> we we will be getting into that soon. Um, so the first thing we have to discuss on seventy two pin connector. Um, but before that, that was a teaser. Oh, teaser! Uh, teaser being oh. teased. What? <laughs> right? What is this? So, we do it all here. We do it all here, folks. <laughs> So how how was your guys' weeks? What have what have you been doing? Was it good? Was it bad? Did you eat or drink anything interesting? Um well The week was fine. I was very tired all week for no reason. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much business as usual. Work was <laughs> fairly easy. I didn't really do anything this week. Um did I eat anything good? Yeah, I had some sushi. Nice. Oh. Okay. I like nice. sushi. <laughs> I haven't had sushi in a long time, and it was it wasn't like a nice sushi place. It was just like, oh, here, buy the sushi from this grocery store. But it was actually good. Nice. You know, I've actually been really surprised by grocery store sushi. It's mm -hmm. not as bad as it sounds. No, it's way far far and above uh, gas station sushi, which I will not touch. <laughs> Are those ever. your rankings? It's like there's it's, a small a window. Thing. There's a small That's window a there. You have like some uh, probably. <laughs> Probably not a thing. That's probably a joke. It's absolutely a it's thing. A it, it, no, 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 it's not a joke. It actually oh it, that exists. Oh. It is a thing. Uh, that Jesus, concerns no. me greatly. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's a lot of things I won't eat from a gas station. <laughs> like I think I think it just the list got topped. Yeah. <laughs> so so Josh, anything for seventy two food connector? Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, we did finally go to our uh, our good friend Derek's um, family restaurant, which is a Thai restaurant, which is really good. Pretty stoked about nice. that. I've never had Thai food. Really? What? Oh, it's good. Yeah, you gotta. It's good. You gotta. Next time you're down here, we'll we'll go get Thai together. If you if you like, right. when you work in an office, it's like number one thing they'll take you out for. <laughs> it's oh, okay. A, it's an office nice. stereotype. Like you, could, you want to get Thai? You want to get Thai? Oh, I thought Chili's was an office stereotype. No, Chili's is horrible. <laughs> well, Chili's isn't bad. Chili's not bad. Chili's is like the Chili's of Chili's. You know what I mean? Chili's is less. <laughs> Chili's is less bad Applebee's. I guess. You see, uh, when you subscribe to 72 Pin Connector, you get insightful reviews like Chili's is the Chili's of Chili's. It's true. The reason I say that specifically is because Chili's is Chili's. Like you reference Chili's, uh, uh, you reference other things and you turn back to Chili's. You're like, oh, what was that like? Well, it was like, you know, like a Chili's, but on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> like, like where we were, we went, we went, um, we went to see the Sequoia Redwoods. Uh, was, we went to the Redwoods, but you know, to see the sequoias and stuff, and we yeah. were. It was really great, but there was this little cabin, and this cabin uh, had like um, a restaurant near it, right? There's like a big. There's like we were, we were in these little cabins, and there's a little restaurant cabin. It's hard to mm -hmm. separate those two and say cabin twice and still roll through it. <laughs> but this, this restaurant cabin actually was really nice, and you go in there, it looks really pretty. It looks like you know all rustic and everything looks really cool. But then you look at it and you're like, you have the food and you deal with the wait staff, and you just realize like, no, this is just chilies in the woods. You know, <laughs> you know? like this isn't. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not fancy. It's not, it's rustic, uh, yeah, but it's just yeah. chilies in the woods. <laughs> so that, well, I mean, it's better than Chili's and normal places. Chili's right. yeah, usually are. Yeah, exactly. That's so, why so you say it's the Chili's of Chili's. It's just like, you're, okay, you went to Chili's. Great. I understand. <laughs> is is this the the uh, awaited hot sequel to Cabin in the Woods? Is Chili's in the Woods? Yeah, with Ooh. more diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> more. I'd watch it. I'd watch it. I, I would also watch it. Everyone dies on the toilet. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Jesus this is Christ. a Chipotle, man. Come on. Okay, yeah. I guess it's not <laughs> that bad. About. 
I guess oh. that's not that chilies isn't that bad. I, I enjoy chilies. <laughs> so so for for my my uh, contribution to seventy two food connector, and I apologize to everyone on the audio version of this podcast. I've got a double fruit, semi muddled old fashioned. Mm, so nice. how you make an old fashioned? It takes a sugar cube and some bitters. I used orange bitters, and oh, you can tell. Uh, I've got <laughs> Woodford Reserve rye whiskey because rye is the most powerful of the whiskeys. Um, two orange slices, two maraschino cherries, and one orange slice and one cherry partially muddled within the whiskey. It mm. adds a little bit of fruity flavor. It's delicious. Nice. That sounds delicious. I've never had an old fashioned. <laughs> it's it's good. I uh, I gotta say I should have added more water because water is something you add to this to make it not taste like a glass full of whiskey. It, oh, it, there's a lot of whiskey in here. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna nurse this for the rest of the night. So so stay tuned for the end of the cast where it gets really fun. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll when, be great. When Tom I'm, gets I'm, belligerent. Well, I mean, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna lose this shirt, guaranteed. <laughs> well, oh, whoa, hello. Well, we are <laughs> oh, doing <laughs> we are doing a postcast thing this weekend. Yes, yes, we are. Uh, tonight's yes. postcast game. Uh, good news, everyone. You don't have to buy a game for this one. Um, I'm going to be hosting the Jackbox Party Pack. We're going to be playing TKO. If we get bored of that, I'll move over to Quiplash 2. Um, last time we played something from the Jackbox Party Pack, it's great. All you need is uh, a mobile device of some kind or a laptop or like uh, an a computer, iPad browser. or a, you know, a Palm Pilot. Well, basically something with a browser. Did you say Palm Pilot? Um, Did you drop Palm? Yes, Did you really I, drop Palm Pilot on us? <laughs> I just dropped Palm Pilot on the chat. All right, we'll, we'll play. We'll play. <laughs> we'll play, Grandpa. So all you, all you gotta do is we'll go to Jackbox.tv. You don't have to install anything. It's all browser based. Uh, it'll be a good time. Absolutely. We do have an internal rule because this is a family friendly cast. Try to be as offensive as humanly possible. <laughs> this will get you kicked out of a Chili's in the woods. You right. <laughs> if, if, if we were getting kicked out of a chili, we tried. We tried. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that's that's about all for the main content of the podcast. Now we'll get to the yeah. side stuff. <laughs> yeah, I guess games or something. Spe- uh, speaking of uh, uh, of of woods and and dark and chilies, Adam, what have you been yeah. playing? Because there's a game on here <laughs> yeah. I do not recognize. Oh yeah, you do because I talked about it last week, but I played it a little bit more this week. Uh, Darkwood. Um, this is the top-down survival horror thing. I talked about it a little bit last week. I played a little bit more today. Um, I don't want to get too far into it because it's it releases, I believe, on the seventeenth of August, and the your save files are not they don't roll over to the newest versions. So Ooh. I don't want to get like halfway through and then lose all my progress and have to start over when the game releases finally. So I'm just kind of tread, treading lightly into it, kind of exploring it to see how interested I'm going to be in it. And then once it releases, I'll actually maybe give it a really fair shot. But that game is pretty tense, actually. Like tense. I'm looking forward to playing this. Yeah, it's hey. um, I described it a bit last week, how there's like a there's a really good sense of dread. It's kind of a, a hardcore survival horror old school style where you have like the inventory management and you know it's it's going to be very difficult but um i was i was trying to describe last week how like the the general vibe of it and i kind of pinpointed it it feels like an actual nightmare Mm. like it feels very dream it's got this dreamy atmosphere to it this real dark gritty dreamy atmosphere um, everything down to the movement speed of the character is pretty slow. Really? Even when you're sprinting, holding shift, it's pretty slow. And it kind of reminds me of those dreams where you're like, you're trying to get somewhere, but you just can't move. Right. Like you, like like you just kind of hardly move. Mm-hmm. It's got a little bit of that. Um, but just the whole the whole thing just seems kind of surreal and... Isn't that interesting though? Very creepy. Like how, how subtle things like that in games and movies, like that feeling of of not being able to do something really instills that emotion in you. Like, like mm-hmm. even in film, like like even the slightest tilt of the camera makes you feel uneasy because it's not square up. You know, like a yeah. lot of times, like in like horror movies, when you're not supposed to feel comfortable, they'll like that, like not even like, 
like do 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 do. Yeah, they'll just they'll yeah. just go they'll just go boop, and then they'll just kind of zoom in like that where you're just not the ground's not quite level and you just don't feel yeah. comfortable. Like yeah. that's really interesting that like even a game like even a video game or video games are taking in that sort of vibe, the sort of feel from just slowing down the motion, giving it a floaty mm-hmm. feel. Yeah. My my only issue with this game is that. You did talk about it last week. I now remember yeah. you talking about it last week. I commented yeah. on it because it looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, and the mechanics look great. And it had such a generic name that it completely fell off my <laughs> radar. Darkwood. What's Darkwood. that? That's uh, real unfortunate. Well, <laughs> to be fair, you are in the woods and it does get dark. Damn. Um. <laughs> Just like my favorite game. Fat plumber dude smushes things. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> No, but um, I was playing today, and and one of the the dialogue. There's a little bit of dialogue, and I like the way it's written. Um, there's this character guy that after I actually I died in the game, and when I woke up in my little home base house thing, this guy was standing there, and you talk to him, and it brings up the screen where it shows the character on the right hand side with the cool little subtle animation, and um, and it shows the text on the left hand side of you know whatever's being said. And it's this dude with it's like really dirty looking. He's got like hobo looking clothes on and like a, almost like a not a space helmet, but like a helmet covering his face and then like a burlap sack over top of that. Like really strange stuff. Average and, everyday um, guy. Yeah. It. <laughs> and uh, it describes him as he doesn't speak. He's like got his hand in a piece of charcoal and he writes what he's going to say to you on his hand and shows it to you. And it describes that and uh, you can trade with them. And then there's an option with any character that you meet, you can show them items that you found key items. And maybe they'll talk about, you know, uh, you're trying to get out of the woods, basically. So they might say something. So one of the things that I found in the beginning of the game was a photo of a road. And uh, what your character says is, oh, this is the road home. This is how I get out of here. So one of the options with that guy was to show him said picture. And he replied with... Every road leads deeper into the woods. Hmm. And I was like, oh. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> intense. Nice. But there's just this real dark quality to this game that's it's really intriguing to me. Um, I, I, I definitely want to play this more. And I'm going to play this more. So that's that's interesting. I'm totally looking forward to the full review. Do you, oh. have, um, do you have any idea like... Uh, how far you are into the game? Are you close to the end? Not at all. I okay. no, not even close. I mean, I'm barely getting started. Even um, I've really only played maybe an hour, hour and a half. I didn't want to get too far into it because you know the the save thing. But um, it seems like there's there's going to be a decent amount of content. Okay, sweet. Well, yeah, I might have to check that out. It looks really cool. I don't know if it's a game I would want to buy, though. I don't know how long I would play that. Ooh. Tom, that, you're, cutting that said, out. You're, you're cutting out a bit, Tom. Oh, wait, <laughs> I? With that yeah. said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with none you, of li- it said. you literally cut out <laughs> that whole explanation. It was fantastic. <laughs> well, shit. Well, please say again. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know if, like, this is something I want to play, but I don't know if I want to buy it, because I don't know how long I would play this thing. I still have to finish, yeah. you know, the awesome horror games that I have that I've never played. I've yeah. also, I don't have Resident Evil 7 yet. I'm still waiting for that oh, to hit the five. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Such a good game. I played so, a little bit. I finished yeah. that. Yeah. I started into that. I played a little bit on the PlayStation VR. Oh, spooky. I'm too, too scary. Too, <laughs> too, scary. S- too spooky for <laughs> too you. Spooky, too spooky for me. Three spooky, five me. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, uh, so Josh, has anything been been spooking you recently in, in gaming rooms? Um, yes, <laughs> or or in real life. Either way, this is a seventy two yeah. PC therapy hour. Yeah, I mean, okay, I, I I didn't play any scary games. I'm not a scary game guy. Uh, just just I, I'm more of a funny game guy, 
kitty game guy. No, I'm just kidding. Not really. It was just <laughs> I like I get into scary games. I get in the mood for a scary game, and I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. Just can't. I can't. That's get, fair. Like, I, like I'm like, let's go, let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be scared. It's gonna be great. And I go into it, <laughs> and I just yeah. fucking fail. And I just like there's, puss out immediately, and I just can't do there's, it. There's been a good amount of years for developers to refine the art of scaring the shit out of you. Yeah, so oh, it's pretty fair that it works. <laughs> yeah, no, it it works better than most horror movies. Most horror movies I sit through, like you yeah, know, all kids are like, oh, uh, you know. But like for the most part, yeah. like I'm, you know, I'm I'm not as scared as when I when I'm like playing it, I'm like tense, like sweating, I'm yeah. like oh fuck, oh fuck. It what's makes happen? all the difference. <laughs> yeah, because it's so interactive. You feel like you're there because you are controlling what's going on. Right. Even if you hand the controller to somebody else and watch them play, it does not affect you nearly as much as when you're the one going through it right exactly yeah, exactly totally so like I, I i never i never really get i never really get into the scary games i never I, like I, mm-hmm. I used to i used to be really big into them i used to do silent hill i used to do mm-hmm. resident evils and like whatever scary game i get my hands on but like nowadays like i just can't i can't do it maybe it's just i'm a gigantic wuss <laughs> that's, what <I> devol- <laughs> that's what i devolved into but i mean <laughs> off the top of like of scary games i mean that's pretty much it for me. Um, mm-hmm. What uh, you have you have you been playing anything else, Adam? Like just uh, just Darkwood, pretty much. Or are you? Oh no, uh, really? I only played Darkwood a little bit today. Not not so much through the week or ongoing so much. Right. Um, right. I did play some Rocket League, some Battlegrounds, same old stuff. Uh, our buddy Liquid Champion carried us to victory in Battlegrounds. Nice. Uh, I believe it was was it yesterday? Get, get I believe it was yesterday. He got like nine or ten kills or something me me and the other guy we were playing with died Jesus. within the first uh you know 10 minutes nice and then he just won <laughs> nice <laughs> um and then other than that we played some mount your friends this was last week's uh postcast community game uh, a very dumb little game i love that where, game yeah it, no it was a lot of fun but oh my god did you it's, guys uh, did you guys do the fling like like uh, there's a couple settings yeah. you can do where you can like if you time it right you go like and then you just flip yeah. your and you just like launch yourself to the yeah we started moon. to get kind of good at the game after, yeah. after the few <laughs> I, the first I few totally ones. I totally misjudged gravity though we were playing in space mode and I had the perfect fling for regular gravity oh so you <laughs> just you just went to the moon you're just orbiting I, at that point. <laughs> Well, we, we were playing with a horizontal build, and I flung myself off and laid it on the floor, which disqualified me. Oh, mm. no. That's, that's the so one of my... That one's so fun. I I mean, you can't... like One of the best ones is like the big tower one, but like going across is just hilarious, because you're trying to get yeah. to the end as fast as you can. So, like especially later on, when she played it a bit, you're just like, oh, you're all, fuck, 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 and then like you just mm-hmm. launch yourself randomly by accident, because you can't yeah. quite make it. <laughs> you're like, oh, no. Yeah, that, yeah. So, that's, that's a great it, one. It was five dollars, um, and it is by far a hilarious game to play. Only with friends, only yeah. in voice chat or sitting next to each other. Right. Like, mm-hmm. If you're a single player gamer or you just play online with people you don't know, don't don't no. pick this game up. It's totally not worth it. No, um, even absolutely at, not. Even at five dollars, but for five dollars, sitting around with her friends, holy shit, this was hilarious <laughs> and disturbing and offensive on so many levels. It was great. Yes. It's the only game I've played that has dick physics. Yeah, dick yeah physics. they they spin. Yeah. The, yeah. They, they they helicopter. Yep, they That's, do. <laughs> a lot of a lot of helicopter dongs in that game. Unfortunately, <laughs> God, that game's great. They, they also, do. the the menu, the main menu sounds where you're navigating through the menu is somebody slapping an ass cheek. That's what it sounds like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, that's I, know, I can't make the sound, but it's <laughs> even that is a little bit <laughs> oh man uh, offensive in that way. And oh my god, okay, the music in that game when yeah, you're it's actually, actually climbing, good. It's the really music good. is oh, epic. Man. It's this orchestral, dramatic, really well produced and made recorded uh, music, and then you're a bunch of naked dudes climbing on each other up a mountain, basically. <laughs> yeah, you, a, could, a, you couldn't a, have what it we call the man mountain. <laughs> oh god creating the man mountain that uh, it's ever it's seen so the, the back to the pile episode of south park it's literally <laughs> that the yeah. game everybody back to the pile <laughs> um yeah so to just describe the game uh you basically everybody takes turns climbing each other up each other <laughs> so like <laughs> it, it controls like the game co-op uh 
but you've got a button for each limb and then you hold a directional button and then when you press the button for that limb, you know, that's the one that'll move in that direction and then it'll automatically grapple the stuff. So you have to use these awkward, cumbersome controls to climb. And, you know, it starts off, there's a goat standing there for whatever reason that's a goat. Well, I mean, obviously. And goats. Yeah. You know, or what else would it be? Mm -hmm. So the first guy, you climb on top of the goat and then your turn is over. The second guy has to climb at least as high as your character and it just keeps building on and you take turns and all the people stay there. And eventually you're climbing up Man Mountain <laughs> and trying to fling yourself up before the timer runs out to get uh, higher than the last guy. Yeah, it starts out pretty easy because, I mean, you're like, OK, well, I'm going to climb on this dude's leg and do a handstand and I'm higher. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now my turn's done. Eventually it gets to the point where you're like, holy shit, I have 60 seconds. Can I actually scale this mountain of half naked <laughs> men? fast enough <laughs> in order to keep from getting disqualified so you have to like swing on another person and fling yourself yeah. up with the <laughs> hilarious physics engine yes. oh yeah the thing is is like a game like that there's like nowhere else to go you decide like that's the game like that is pretty much as far as that can like we go horizontal we put shit in the way uh we, what, yeah. else, what else do we got like like that's yeah. it that's the game <laughs> like you yeah. could you might be able to do like nope it's all there it's a complete game. Yep. There's nothing else. Mm -hmm. Like no one else can come back in and redo that game and do it better. There's like, there's mm -hmm. not really a lot you can do that would make that game better. It just is what that's it is. What I, that's what I like about uh, the whole indie game thing and how easy it is to uh, put your game out there. And you can have these little games that are, you know, five, ten bucks, and mm -hmm. they're kind of I won't want to say throwaway games, but you know, just these little games you can play with friends. Uh, not no time commitment whatsoever. Uh, just a good time instead of, you know, I, not every game I want to buy. I don't want every game I buy to be a $60 triple a yeah. hundred hour RPG. You know, right. sometimes I want to have these games that we can just, you know, at the end of a podcast, jump into for an hour, maybe two tops and have fun with it. Right. Right. And for $5, is... I had more fun with that than I've had watching a lot of movies at the theater. So yeah. <laughs> right? it's true. I wouldn't say it's money wasted. No, it's not at all. It's, it's what I like about, you know, every online platform that embraces indies right now. It's, mm -hmm. it's so easy to just say, Hey, I've got this game. It's $5. It's on steam. Go. Right. It, Cause yeah. I mean that, that indie dev made, you know, at least 30 bucks off of us that podcast night because it was cheap and it was available when we just wanted to play some stupid game where we climbed half naked men all night. It was, <laughs> you know, you can't yeah. get that kind of entertainment outside of inner city, San Francisco. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, you sure? so kind of jumping <laughs> off that, I have an, imp an impromptu question for you guys. Um, what was the cheapest game that you've got the most enjoyment out of on steam? cheapest game like what's one of those games that was just absurdly cheap and you bought it and you ended up sinking a bunch of time into and loving it we have to qualify um does free do free games count also do steam sales count steam sales do count uh but okay. let's try to keep it like you know games with low base prices to begin with mm hmm yeah, it's it, that's a hard question because it's almost like so, are yeah. you talking immediate enjoyment? Because like the thing is is like like Bivens points out, and this is great, because I was actually going to go to this. Like Golf with mm -hmm. Your Friends was fantastic. It was a good first yeah. buy. When I bought it, I played it, but I only played it once. But that one time was fantastic. But totally I never went never went back to it. Never right. went back to it. I have a so, few games like that that have been like burner mm -hmm. games where I've like I got an ex insane amount of enjoyment out of for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe I spent a couple hours, three hours like that day I spent playing it. Right. Yeah. But then after yeah. that I stopped or relatively speaking, I could say that I spent like some more like $20 on a game and maybe came back to it over and over again, but never had that same level of instant enjoyment. Okay. <laughs> so it makes it complicated. I guess, I guess I'm I thinking like the, the most value you've gotten for, compared to the monetary value so for instance i got terraria for like two or three dollars on, on a steam sale one time and we sank probably a hundred or two hours into building this cool world and we played it constantly for like two weeks um another one was the binding of isaac the the original binding of isaac i played for probably 250 hours mm -hmm. and i bought that for like maybe two or three dollars on a steam sale 
That's yeah. Give that's, me games where you just got like for almost nothing on a Steam sale or uh, it's already cheap, and then all of a sudden you find yourself playing this like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the one of the few. Okay, so here it, this is one that I got for free, mm-hmm. and that was Urban Terror. That was one of the first games I played on PC uh, after like Duke Nukem and some of those ones. But when I first Mm -hmm. started playing like PC gaming, I started playing this game called Urban Terror. And that was basically Counter-Strike, but with um, with with like uh, Hollywood physics is what they called it. Um, Mm -hmm. And that was like you can wall jump. And you can like when you 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 I call it you can slide so like when you crouch like if you're moving at pace you crouch and then you just slide across the world so like you can be jumping off walls all the way up like super high and then land on a top like thing and like slide around the corners and pick up speed and do all that stuff but it's pretty much beyond that plays like Counter Strike and I sunk hundreds and hundreds of hours into that that was probably. Mm-hmm the most time spent in a game for free. <laughs> nice. Tom, so, do, you, do you have any? I, I do. I've got three answers because I don't okay. like rules. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so if we're going games that have any price from zero to infinite, uh, you know, an in infinite price, um, Dota 2 is free, and I have sunk far <laughs> more, far uh, more hours of my life into Dota answer. 2. That's <laughs> a, that doesn't count. Right? Um, I, I forget my third answer because that's me. Um, but I, I gotta say, uh, CS:GO. I've put over a yeah. hundred hours into CS:GO, which is, I mean, that said, a hundred yeah. hours into CS:GO is nothing compared to the people who actually love CS:GO. Who are, yeah. Well, yeah. Still. Yeah. But, but you know, I I bought that game. I bought like three or four copies for my friends, and it was fifteen dollars when it came out. A launch game, a Valve game, fifteen dollars, and I still play oh, it. Did it really? At least once a week. Yeah. It the came launch. Out 15, the launch price was fifteen dollars. I I want to say it was fifteen bucks. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't man. on sale. It wasn't anything. I didn't it realize was that. The best fifteen dollars I have ever spent in gaming. <laughs> um, that said, you know. Dark Souls is pretty close because I fucking love Dark Souls. And there's a bunch of time I've spent, you know, with Dark Souls that's not in game or counted on Steam. You know, mm. right, watching videos, looking up lore, diving through forum posts, mm-hmm. uh, looking at, uh, you know, the differences in translation between the English and Japanese versions because there's there's some lore hints there. It's really cool. And I love you too, Dark Soul Invader. Thank you. <laughs> um, but you know, six. I, I bought that for. I think I got it on on sale. But it that game has been on sale so much. Yeah. yeah. Any it's, anybody it's that totally ever wants it. to play Dark Souls can reasonably get it for peanuts. And it's true, yeah, you know, it really try is it true. But I, I gotta say, if we if we can't count Dota, CS:GO for me. Nice. I guess if you went back to like you know more, I guess the the root goal of the of the conversation, I think is is. A, a game that I really got hooked on was probably World of Goo. Nice. That that game, that, was really that game was really good when it released, and I had relatively unheard of. So I was like, I was really, you know, really didn't know what to think of it when I got into it. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, like this might be this might be okay. And I kind of I sunk a lot of time into that one. I actually yeah. really enjoyed it at the time. But that was, you know, all of these. There's so many games like this though. There's so many mm-hmm. games out there that you burn through that you get a ton of enjoyment out of and Mm -hmm. and some of those just like don't come back to you until you start browsing back through your steam library and you sit there you're like oh oh, you know what like i forgot about that like that game was amazing i spent a ton of time on that um but yeah i mean as far as like something you could reasonably get now i mean sometimes just portal works out you know sometimes yeah. Yeah. sometimes you can go back to world of goose sometimes you can go to like braid you know braid was a fantastic mm. playthrough it's such a good game. it was a great experience but like you know so with steam summer sales like i could easily you know with steam sales in general i can say like oh just cause three because it's it was like 10 bucks for everything yeah the other day <laughs> <laughs> so uh do you guys have any what about, what about, answers yeah what about you Adam? Any what? Yeah, Adam. So, so how about you first? Oh, mine was uh, I mentioned Terraria. Mm. Okay, uh, got that super cheap. The Binding of Isaac was one of them. Mm. It's like three dollars, two hundred fifty hours. The first one, and then that led to me buying the the Rebirth, the remake of it, 
uh, for 15 and then all the expansions on launch day since then. So I'd say that's a, yeah, that'll, that's a pretty good sign there. Do you guys have a, uh, have a retro answer for this question? How retro, Mm. how retro do you want? What what are you looking for? I'm looking for like a game, a game you bought as a kid that Uh you dumped so many hours into that one cartridge or disc. Pokemon blue. (laughs) <laughs> yeah pokemon blue uh, pokemon anything really i mean I actually think I to be, gold most yeah i think you're right actually i played i did play gold more than i played blue but like yeah if you went there uh uh breath of Ocarina fire of time Bre- breath of fire 2 i would say tony hawk's pro skater i don't remember which one though probably all of them <laughs> <laughs> i played yeah. a lot of that back when i was a kid we got a we got a monster hunter on psp oh, oh, nice. perfect dark bivens with the Mega Man battle network 3 i right? played the oh. hell out of that game I, I, I still game. have that game right now i've got battle man uh Mega Man battle network 3 i think both colors there was like a blue and a red or mm-hmm. something because everything, <laughs> everything had to have multiple colors back in the day. Yeah. Fucking Bomberman released a Game Boy game that had multiple colors. <laughs> but I but, love that okay. game's combat system. It was such a cool mix of like real-time action and then like a card kind of turn-based thing almost. I liked I it wish, a lot. I wish someone would take that concept and run with it today because it was mm-hmm. so cool. And it seems to have died with Battle Network because they released like 27 games in a year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with that, so, so, I mean, Tom, Tom, yeah. what, 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 yeah. what, are, what you're are, the retro guy. Yeah. You probably got a list of 20 or 30 of these like, things. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you'd be the retro God for this. You, you yeah. <laughs> so, so awkward of time for me. Um, and that wasn't just the main quest, right? Cause the main quest it's, it's great and all, but I would literally just run around Hyrule because at the time it was the biggest world I had ever seen as a kid. I can run around, I can ride my horse, I can collect rupees, I can play games, I can do whatever I want to in this big open space. Um, but then as I got a little older and I got a game shark and I accessed the internet and I figured out that people were hunting for hidden beta content in the cartridge. So I spent just months, like probably probably an entire year of my life was dedicated to picking through, uh, like, hex dumps of Ocarina of Time, looking up Game Shark codes, editing Nintendo 64 memory values with a Game Shark to unlock beta content in Ocarina of Time. Did you know, to test the Z-targeting system in Ocarina of Time, they put an R-Wing in the game as an enemy? Oh, really? An R-Wing from Star Fox. You can look it up on YouTube. It's <laughs> it's amazing, and I spawned one of these in the game. It was, it was really cool. That's um, awesome. But, Everyone found a lot of beta content. I jumped on forums like mm-hmm. that. It was a huge part of my life trying to deconstruct systems. And it's probably what started me on the path to a technical career today. So nice. Good on you, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Thanks for the career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's that's totally my answer. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. I mean, well, with all the 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 retro talk and the games that you were playing what about mm-hmm. lately what games have you been yeah. playing now uh nothing nothing, yeah, nothing. no games you just quit <laughs> liar <You're dead. laughs> i just work i just liar. work I have video yeah, proof in our shared work. drive folder <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> so um let's let's start out with with the simple stuff um i've been playing a little more breath of the wild I am still finding things to do in that game i'm still completing nice. quests i'm still finding treasure uh beating shrines that's insane. Is, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of content. How long have you owned your Switch now? Uh, I got it in April, so three months. And nice. I still so the, I would say the honeymoon period is over for me in the Switch. Um, mm-hmm. And I can I can come at you and say I don't regret my purchase one bit. And mm, nice. Zelda is Good. totally worth the price of the console. So really? if you have a Wii U, you know, go go buy Zelda. But I I wouldn't tell anyone to go buy a Wii U because it's yeah. a Wii U, right? Yeah. Right. But yeah, no, it's awesome. I love it. I'm still putting hours into Breath of the Wild. Uh, it is the best Zelda game of all time, if not one of the greatest games ever created. It's wonderful. If you want, oh, if you want a game that embodies adventure and going on an adventure, if you ever read The Hobbit as a kid and you're like, oh my god, I want to go on an adventure, get Breath <laughs> of the Wild. It does that. It scratches that itch. Nice. Um, other than that, I've been going through Shovel Knight challenges, and fuck, that game's hard. 
I was um, going to say, isn't the base game hard enough as is? What, it what is. Challenges? <laughs> it is. So one of the challenges was, hey, you know, climb this tower or survive this wave of enemies without swinging your shovel. It's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Pardon me, sir? <laughs> or hey, you have this one weird item that does one weird thing. Try to complete an entire level doing this. And it's nice. like it's purpose built challenges to get a little bit more out of the game. I haven't even started nice. on the DLC um careers or anything like that. Oh, um, wow. but I, I will say That's soon. awesome. If uh if you haven't or if you plan on playing The Binding of Isaac more, I know you got that for the Switch. Yes. It, it also has challenges you can do where you'll start off with a specific weird combination of items that makes it difficult to proceed. <laughs> the uh, the daily challenges in The New Binding of Isaac is my favorite part nice. of that game. Yeah. I, will, I will load that up just for the daily challenge. Nice. You know, that's like the, the crazy thing about that and like how you're explaining like, you know, you do everything in a different way or you attack at a different angle. It's what kept me playing like left for dead. You know, like mm-hmm. I played left for dead a lot uh, early on and, and I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't really like, I got burnt out really fast. Cause it's like the same couple levels and it wasn't that, that great when I was playing through it. But then you got into the achievements and the achievements had all these like really unique ways of finishing levels. Like, you know, get through the whole thing without shooting your gun. And it's like, it gets really fun like that. So I love when they do like those weird modified challenges where it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, let's put you in this box and try to go, especially in like a really, you know, uh, open-ended situation where they like, they, they restrict you down to like your, you know, your, your fists. <laughs> so uh, there's, there's another game I've, I uh, have almost completed. I'm really close. Uh, Super Hot VR. Ooh, nice. I've watched so, you play a little bit of that on stream the other day. Yeah, I watched you. Yeah, <laughs> looked amazing. So, it's uh, what I would classify as one of the few, you know, full VR games. Um, it, it doesn't feel like a tech demo. It doesn't feel like, hey, we have a game and we added VR to it. Go have fun. Uh, it feels like it was it was built for it. I mean, of course it wasn't, but it feels that way. And that's all that matters. Uh, so it's twenty five bucks. Go out and buy it. You can. Uh, what I expected when I bought it is to get super hot. And then, you know, have it be VR, but that's not the case. They're actually two entirely different products. Hmm. So Super Hot's twenty five bucks, Super Hot VR is twenty five bucks. I, I don't know how I feel about that, but mm-hmm. I I enjoy it and it does it, they did put the work into it. Um it's a good game. Um it's super hot, so time only moves when you move, and mm-hmm. you run around shooting things, throwing things. You feel like a fucking badass. It is a Matrix simulator. If you're ever <laughs> to kill people in slow motion, like, punch a dude in the dick, he drops his knife, you take his knife, stab his buddy, who drops throwing stars, so you throw him at his other buddy <laughs> and hit him in the face, and then you pick up a beer bottle and clock some other guy. You can do all that in super hot VR. That's um, so cool. Does it it's play really it back? Nice. Does it play it back for you when you're done, like in full speed? No, no, okay. sadly enough. That was the best thing about Super Hot when I was playing. This is like you go through it kind of slow because you know, I, I, I like if you don't move your mouse or anything, nothing's moving. So you're like, all right, mm-hmm. I see a guy it there, there, and you're like, okay, pick, and I got this guy. Bit, like really slow yeah but then and then when you're done you like john wick out and you're like oh, gah, 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 gah. Yeah. <laughs> you're like i killed everyone everyone's dead 10 seconds room full of dudes they're all dead like it was fine like <laughs> and super easy yes. it was really fun to watch with- that back but i think it'd be really jarring like having that your screen moving around like that crazy at full speed mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you, you never move the camera in VR. That's one of the, the central tenets of VR. You right. move it as little as possible. Because um, yeah. bad bad motion sickness things happen. No, yeah. you would, yeah, um, you would, you would spew. Included with your copy of Super Hot VR, it's the a commemorative a... bucket. <laughs> bucket. <laughs> super Hot Bucket. With yep. The Super Hot Bucket. The logo on the outside. <laughs> so what, what are the challenges? Actually, it's with... on the inside. <laughs> yeah, so, so you can see. So it. you can see it. <laughs> it's, it's got uh, it's got the a... HTC Vive adapter attached to it, and they model it in game. So it's always yeah. next to you. You can just grab it, so you can see it mm. with your VR headset on, and uh, you know puke into the bucket without having to take the gear off. It's just a, oh, they it's should just have one that just attaches inside. with straps. 
it attaches with straps to your VR oh, headset, and just see, hangs I in front of you one. right at your chest level. Like, like, a, totally buy one of those. like a like a horse thing. Like what is that called? Yeah, <laughs> a feed bag. Yeah. Let's develop a let's develop a twenty frames per second VR game and include that with it. <laughs> yes. it comes with a It'd be locked, great. Cut. Twenty frames locked. <laughs> So one of the things in Super Hot VR that I didn't expect to be a challenge is like I would I would jump into a level and be like fuck because so I'm, I'm holding as still as I can and I'm looking at these dudes who are moving towards me very slowly and I've got nothing I've got no items I've got nothing I've got like a beer bottle or a coffee cup next to me I'm like fucking shit how am I going to get past this except if I took a step back like a physical step back in my living room and I looked down there's guns at my feet. One of the challenges of Super Hot VR is looking around the room and trying to see what is available to you without dying. It's really weird because <laughs> one of the challenges of the game is just not rushing through it and actually sitting to observe. It, it accentuates the puzzle game nature of Super Hot. Mm -hmm, right. um, but it's, it's really good. There are moments where they put you in front of a bunch of dudes and they're like, hey, uh, you know, dodge. Because Super Hot doesn't really give you a whole lot of instructions. Uh -huh, Sometimes yeah. they do, but most of the time they don't. And you literally have to dodge by running around your living room until you complete that little challenge. That's so, so, cool. you can get, so you can get a weapon. So you nice. can't fight or anything. You just have to try to survive. That sounds amazing. Uh, what it's those? really good. I like that idea of just not like immersing you into it and just shooting. They they did a good job with that in the main game too, or the other game. I shouldn't say main game because technically they're both different. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and like they did a lot of that cool challenges uh, in the other game. But I'm I'm excited to sit, to hear that it, like they got you moving around the house, like jumping and rolling. I just, oh, it's, I just, it's great. Yeah. The only downside is. Like I, I get into VR games, um, and <laughs> I mean, there was so uh, you know playing in VR with someone sitting on your couch, and you run up to the dude, and you're gonna like clock him in the face and, and just punch his lights out with your your Vive controller, except you ran up right next to the couch, and you're now punching at your guests on the couch. Oh no. Um, so you got to be careful. Super Hot VR is a game that I would recommend people yeah. really, really clear out of the room for before you start playing. Tonight because... on the 7 o'clock news. <laughs> yeah. Man murders I... wife in VR. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Domestic violence charge at whatever your house is. Seattle. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, I actually I just found another answer for the, you know, what's your most basically your most valuable game that you've ever bought mm -hmm. for the lowest price. Um, light blade VR, which is mm. conveniently titled because it's totally not a lightsaber. We promise, even though we took the sound effects directly <laughs> from Star Wars, nice. we promise. Um, you know that scene in A New Hope where there's that little robot dude and Luke's got the lightsaber and he's trying mm -hmm. to block the lasers. Right. That's all the game is. That's it. Oh yeah, That's I remember cool. playing this. It was like That's three a lot of fucking fun. dollars. And I have yeah. put so many hours into that game because it's a <laughs> stupid concept that's so much yeah. fun. You mm -hmm. have dual lightsabers. You can block the thing. It has different difficulty levels. It is so much fun, and it was so cheap. So if you have a Vive um, or an Oculus with touch controllers, uh, go Lightblade VR. It's fucking wonderful. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Super Hot VR, totally worth your purchase price of 25 bucks. Um it doesn't feel like a tech demo. It actually feels like a full game. It's really good. So, nice. so go go grab it. They do do some cool VR specific um, little things. I, I'm gonna. I'm trying not to spoil this game. Um, that uh, were kind of weird and I haven't seen done before. Uh, so yeah, totally worth twenty five bucks. Nice. Um, beyond that, and I've talked forever. Uh, so <laughs> Splatoon 2, it's a shit ton of fun. Um, we were actually playing today on stream with uh, Irk and ah shit DJ Roomba and Dlaz. Um, nice. So we were all playing together. It was great. I killed Irk with a paint roller. <laughs> Irk killed me with a bucket. Nice. It's just fun. Uh, and the single player <laughs> isn't bad. Uh, it's good enough to be an almost substitute. I really wish it had hmm. bots, but it doesn't. Yeah. No. Um, Wait, what? I, yes, Splatoon does not have bots at all. Oh, crazy. It is, it is humans. Humans only. 
Oh, mm. that, that's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good game. It's fun. Um, I sort of feel like I got my money worth out of it. It's hard to compare yeah. anything on the Switch to Breath of the Wild because I paid $60 or I paid $360 and I don't feel like I wasted my money, but I paid 60 for Splatoon yeah. and it's a really good game. Um, and that's that's the best I can say about it is it's a really good game. It didn't change my life or anything. Uh, but it's it's good. It's fun. Um, I'm still fucking angry at Nintendo because it could be so much better if they just fixed their stupid online bullshit. Which oh, I'm not, yeah. not going to retread. We did that all last yeah. week. <laughs> it really drags the experience down. Such, it, such it's dark times. Dark times. It is yeah. so fucking shitty what they've done. Um, yeah, it sucks. But but a game that's that's done online right uh, is Dark Souls Three. No, oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it had it had a past. <laughs> so everybody, chug all of your alcoholic beverages that you have in your house right now, because we're yep. going to talk about Dark Souls for a little while. I, I would assume. <laughs> uh, is, is it so just tell like us- bringing up the topic, or is it every time I say Dark Souls, Dark Souls, or Dark Soulsy, or Souls like, or Souls like uh, experience, or Soulsy and approach? It's, it's mostly. <laughs> yeah. All of it. Okay, okay. cool. So, but, uh, we'll just, yeah, just, just so, get whatever bottle of liquor yeah, you have. Just like, you know, set up a bag, you know, catheter. Yeah. Catheter's yes. fine. You should yeah. be fine. Oh, yeah. Get your super hot Straight VR into bucket. It. We're going in. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> so you guys have been playing, uh, for the first time together, Dark Souls 3. Yes. And I would like to hear more about that. How, how has that been going for you guys? Good. I, I think it, I think it's going really <laughs> good. I, I think Definitely. it's going really good. It's so much fun to be back. It feels like an old friend. Like thing is, yeah. is like for me, like I haven't touched a Dark Souls s game for years, mm-hmm. years. Like the last one I played was Dark Souls two, uh, but only briefly. I'm sorry. Like really mm-hmm. quickly after I did one. So like right after mm-hmm. two came out, I got it like launch, played mm-hmm. through it then never touch a dark souls game again i didn't even go back to dark souls 2 like mm-hmm. it just didn't grip me the same as one did so uh, i didn't i just didn't go back i so um so coming back into dark souls 3 is is really fun like it's really cool to be back like dodge rolling mm-hmm. around uh and it was really cool to do it straight through with a friend because i haven't done that yeah. either the first time i went through it no, 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 no friends, no help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, from what I understand, Tom, you have just recently started delving into the Dark Souls series, right? You completed yes. one and started yep. two. Yeah. Uh, so this is cool to to hear it from both of you guys because on one hand you've got somebody who played, you know, Josh, you've played the Dark Souls games and you haven't touched them for a while and you're coming back. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, it's like an old friend, and then Tom is you know, still getting acquainted and, and learning all of the dark souls things. Uh, it's, it's pro- probably pretty cool that you guys get to experience this game together at the same time, given well, your I, different backgrounds with it. I gotta say, I'm gonna have to echo Josh's statement on it feeling like an old friend because I went right from dark souls one straight into two. And I, I went full force. Like, okay, I'm beating this. I'm going through all of these games. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fucking get it done. And I stopped. I gave up on Dark Souls 2. I it just wasn't good enough. It was. I it, mean, yeah. It, it, I don't know what not, it was. It's not, a, it's not a bad game. It's, it's a lot of little things. So in Dark, okay, you're gonna have to get a bottle of liquor because we're going all Dark Souls right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So in in Dark Souls one, the world feels like a place, an actual place. No one right. gives a shit about you. You don't matter. It's not right. that they hate you. You're just insignificant. You could die tomorrow and no one gives a fuck. And that's the feeling of Dark Souls 1 is you literally are just a speck in a universe and no one gives two shits about your existence. Congratulations, you're alive. No one cares. Dark Souls 2 doesn't feel like that. Dark Souls 2, it feels gamey. It feels like the world actively hates you. They know you're alive and they want to kill you. And that's not Dark Souls. Dark Souls is not video gaming the the world isn't built to kill you it'll just happen to kill you by circumstance but it's not (laughs) out to get you dark souls 2 feels actively aggressive which really it drags down the entire feeling of the game 
Uh, on mm -hmm. top of that, from a mechanical issue, the, the combat feels a little sloppier. Uh, the way that they said they, they doubled down on uh, weird statistics for your characters. Like, hey, here's these weirdly named things that may or may not do what we said. Um, you know, go go try to level up now. Um, I'm there were bosses in Dark Souls 2 that I had never died to. Uh, right. Even, you know, first time through, because mm -hmm. even playing through normally, I wasn't grinding or anything, well, but I felt overpowered. What I what I feel like is is and I've always said this, I've always said this to anyone playing a Souls game, and that is your first Souls experience is the best one. Nothing will ever compare to the first time you play a Dark Souls. When you go into Dark Souls and you and you're going in blind, that one that you play, whether it be one, two, three, whether it, it could it could easily be um, uh, freaking Bloodborne. Bloodborne. It could be it could be even something like that, like slightly Dark Souls Z, like a Neo mm -hmm. or something, you know, uh, where it's not quite there. But those ones are going to be your best. That's going to be your best experience because you're new to it. You're new to the like the the punishing nature of it. You're new to to not just sprinting in and just hack and slash, you know, this isn't Dynasty Warriors, you know, you're in here, yeah. you know, you're, you're the exact opposite. You there have to not be two different <laughs> combat based games. Exactly. You, you have to go Josh in. got killed by a, a low level skeleton when we played. Oh, this, yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is not Dynasty Warriors. Regular shit mobs will wreck you if you're not. It's careful. true. It's true. And like, yeah. and that's what, and, and coming, coming into this one, like it, it was really great. Cause I hadn't played anything like dark souls in a while i i used to i spent like like thousands like thousand hours easy easily a thousand or twelve hundred hours somewhere around there on dark mm -hmm. souls one i used to do all sorts of stuff for that and i absolutely loved it and i, I mean every day I come home play dark souls that's what i'd be that's what i'd be doing mm -hmm. um and then i just didn't play dark souls for like a huge period of time so now coming into three the reason it feels so good is because i suck again like yeah. all of that stuff, <laughs> all of that yeah. stuff I learned in the past, all that stuff that like I used to do actively, you know, mm -hmm. and, and like all that muscle memory is gone. So like, and, and it's a fresh game. So the timings are all different. We had people explaining like the parries don't work the same as they did in one and two. Like it's all different. So not only is it a new experience into Dark Souls for me, it's, new controls slightly the feedback's a little yeah. different so it's very like nothing comes back fresh so i feel mm. like this will be probably one of my favorite dark souls experiences already it's because nice. it's, it, it, it's deeper i mean i get more you know i get to have the experience with tom straight through out of the gate mm -hmm. uh that's gonna be great like playing it playing it through with tom's gonna be fantastic but then just being new to it again being fresh to it again yeah. um one th one thing that I think is going to be it's going to start coming back though, and that's what I'm sort of worried about, is that like, you know, I might start figuring it out. Like once I start getting my parries again, like I'm going to start like, okay, this guy's, I'm, I'm messing people up now. It's easier and easier. But one thing that won't come back is shitty ganking. <laughs> like so, like some people busted in there and cheesing you to death. Uh, it felt so yeah. bad, but it was it was cool when we were playing. I think like right about the end of our our session, some guy came in with like high level gear, and we don't I, we don't know how the poise wow. works in the game yet. Yeah, and he just came in. He had like poison daggers. He had electricity oh, well. stuff, and he's like all pop 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 pop. So is like, that? Is that something you can turn off or no? no it's just is... it's it's honestly it's just Dark Souls. Like the first time yeah, you play Dark Souls, you have to get through the first area and you have to level past those people. Like a lot of people, um, I know poise. Yeah, definitely poise exists. I'm just saying, like the way this was handled is a little weird. Um, so uh, what, what's what's going on there is like in Dark Souls. What happens is someone will rush through most of the game because they know where all the stuff that they want is, and they'll mm -hmm. kill things at low levels like really easily, like uh, uh, and they'll get all the way to like a like mid game, and they'll get all the gear they want, and then they'll go back and invade on the people just starting out, and just shit on people <laughs> because. <laughs> and people do that all the time. That's a that that's just how Dark Souls was, and that's that's exactly yeah. what happens all the time. Um, it, it sucks, but I mean, 
is what it is. We just got to get through it. Like, so I can. Uh, so if I want to play through Dark Souls One, I can avoid this by playing the copy of Dark Souls One I have on my PS3 that nobody plays anymore. No, people <laughs> still don't play have to deal with any of that. <laughs> no, you, so, you, so honestly, you can, you, you can actually play completely offline. Uh, that's and, true. And three gives you a nice toggle for that. So for one, you had to actually disconnect your internet or block it in firewall rules. Um, mm. But in Dark Souls Three, you can just set it to offline. That does oh, okay. two things to the game. Because Dark Souls, for those of you who don't know, um, it's online and offline at the same time. It's a single player game, but it's kind of multiplayer. And it's kind of multiplayer, but it's totally single player. It's a mm-hmm. weird hybrid of everything in gaming. Um, so you'll be playing and you'll see signs on the ground, white signs, and you can summon people to help you co-op, which is what Josh and I have been doing. Right. But if you want to get, if you want to steal some pretty valuable uh, gear, or not gear, it's but souls, items so from really people, just... uh, souls or embers or humanity, depending on which game right. you're playing, um, you can use another item to invade someone's world and gank their shit. If you kill them, you get rewarded for it. And that's your job mm. is to go wreck people. Mm-hmm. So if you're playing Dark Souls with an internet connection, you get fucked. But you're going to get fucked anyway because the Dark Souls from software decided, hey, we're not going to you know, water down this experience for people who don't have fast internet. This was you know back in the PS3 days when not everyone mm-hmm. had a broadband connection hooked to their console. Mm-hmm. So in, you know, in Blight Town, you're going to get invaded by Maneater Mildred who looks exactly like an online player would, except she's totally computer controlled. So she's going oh, to try to okay. wreck your shit. Uh, and for the co-op stuff, you know, you're going to find uh, summon things from NPCs that you've met or from Solaire or other characters in the game um, to sort of emulate that online experience. You can go you know, forward 20 years and play mm-hmm. this game when it has no community and still have a roughly analogous experience. It's it's okay. really cool. It's a it's great good. way to build games. Right. Yeah. It's That's interesting. It, yeah. It is quite cool. The the thing is, is that you'll never have that. If you go back and you don't play like the co op, like the best thing about Dark Souls is the online. Like you can counter those dudes, like the the people that come in and like and try to wreck your shit. Like that guy that came at us. Like had we been more seasoned, we could have beat him. It's not. It's yeah. he's not. A, he's not a unique person. He's not significantly better than anybody else you just go in you have to you have to be good and then you just get you can beat them you can beat them with fists like that it's it's yeah. like anything in dark souls you just gotta get good yeah and if you're good enough you can win like there's, there are people there are people who do you know level one naked with a club runs deathless runs of dark souls today you can watch those on youtube right All you gotta That's do incredible. is get good right and <laughs> there's i mean there's people that do like Count, like there's people that do like counter cheating and stuff like that. Like people that actually had like life hacks and in, in the first one they had like a life bar that would just you can't it doesn't go down and they just go and these people would invade those people and hunt them down and they'd still beat them. People that cannot be beaten <laughs> are still beaten in Dark Souls. <laughs> like so so like you can do what you gotta do. We just have to figure out what it is that we have to do. So it's not deterring us at any stretch of the imagination. It's really mm-hmm. exciting, actually, because it just means that people are still there. People are still playing. People are still doing what they used to do. The only thing that like makes you feel a little dirty is when we got our first person invading us. And <laughs> and Tom and I... I don't feel dirty. Kill them I don't feel together. dirty at all. And I'm like, no, I don't like that. I don't like. I I I I, I don't want to do that. I feel so He'd go sad. Go after one of us. I'd rotate around the back and backstab him. You know, for, for me, this is Dark Souls. There is no honor here. This is <laughs> this is not Counter Strike, where you know your enemy pulls out his knife and you have to pull out yours because it's the honorable thing to do. This is you will die. You should kill first. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll look up what the PvP locations are. We'll try to get through those quick without having yeah. to be honorable. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things that I guess that's like that's like the Dark Souls one in me that really wants to like like oh the best part about this is the duels. Let's like you know let's get good at the duels and and deal with these guys in unique ways. Mm-hmm. But I guess I guess not. <laughs> we want to just get through it anyway. <laughs> So there was, um, in Dark Souls 1, to go on a tangent, um, I joined the, uh, the Forest Covenant, which basically, if anyone from a different covenant or no covenant at all comes into the forest, 
Um, I would be called away from literally anywhere I was in the game to go defend the woods. And I would Uh auto-invade anyone else. There was this dude with armor made of pure stone, Havel set for the, the Dark Souls players out there. This pure stone set that literally makes you walk around like a big fat man because you can take, you know, mm. a step per hour sort of stuff. <laughs> Full Havel set, big giant stone shield, big giant club thing. Um, and this dude was leveled up and stacked enough that he was sprinting. He was as fast as a naked Dark Souls player because he had leveled himself up that far. And the wow. game kept making me invade this guy. And I would <laughs> I would hit him with my weapon, and his health bar would go but down by, like, two or three pixels. And he's like, okay, sure. Why not? Oh, they wow. just wrecked my shit every single time. Oh, that's brutal. I, I, on, uh, on Dark Souls... Okay, so I used to do a lot of Dark Souls 1. And, when I, and my favorite build... One of my favorite builds, I have quite a few, but one of my favorite builds was called Big Truck. I don't know if anyone's ever <laughs> seen. The, it's it's a person that used to do this in in Dark Souls, um, and they used to do. I forgot what the whole build was, but it was essentially like Havel's legs and uh, Havel's shield, and then you had a certain setup of your um, a certain like I think it was a stone great axe or something like that. And what you could do is like that thing would like it, you just kind of cruise up to someone. You couldn't move very fast, but you had like, you put your shield up, it's pretty much one to one all the way through. So you put your shield up and you just kind of pan around with them. And then they like, they take attack and you'd either like parry them or dodge them. And then you do this thing where you, you hit them down once and then you could turn it around and then rip it back up and they just go. Oh, <laughs> and it just Jesus. eviscerates them. Uh, the person that used to do it was called Dark Souls Rosie. I have to see mm. what this is. Uh, and it it was the most fun thing ever, and I'll, I'll have to post a link in chat. You should absolutely check that out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, the cool thing about Dark Souls is like how you load out your guy, how you build him. Like you can make a fast strength character or a slow, you know, dexterity character, and like try to like test out different like ways of doing things. In this one, it's no different. Like I'm just trying to get in, and like I want to build the characters that I used to play with, but build it in a new world. But I'm trying not to like mm-hmm. spoil too much of the game. I don't want to go in and like find out where all the gear I want is. I want to go find it. And I want to do it like first time through, like totally dry. So that's what I'm most excited about this time through. Um, I think I got my character somewhere where I want it to be, but mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. I, I've died quite a lot <laughs> trying to <laughs> do things that I used to do. I think Tom has died three times. I've died seven yep. times. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So mm. there's there's an issue we're running into because when you summon someone in oh, Dark Souls, out. it's... Oh, yeah. am I? A little bit. Oh, yeah. shit. Am, am I better now? You're good. Yeah. Okay, cool. This, this network, Comcast, loves me. I just got a nice... <laughs> uh, as long as we're going to rip on Comcast on this podcast, you know, fuck them. Um, <laughs> I got a nice nasty gram saying, hey, you use some data that, you know, you pay for. So we're going to let you off the hook this time. But next time <laughs> we're going to charge you like seven hundred dollars. And I'm like, yeah, go fuck yourselves. I'm just using the <laughs> Internet, dude. Um, and uh, so anyway, one of the issues we're running into when you summon someone in Dark Souls, uh, it's they come in as a spirit is, is mm-hmm. how it how it's described in the world. Um, mm-hmm. They don't see and can't pick up the items in the game. So when Josh is a spirit in my world, I'm picking up all this sweet loot, and Josh is like, oh wait, there was stuff over there? I said, yeah, it was. it's right here. I'm looking at it. He's like, oh, I can't get that. So <laughs> I'm going through, and I've got all this great shit, and Josh is going through, and he's just the naked Dark Souls dude with the club. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're going to have to figure out a way to, to get around that. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i i don't mind it. it it was the same way before like um in the in one i don't know two because i never played co-op on two i just went straight through by myself um but like in you know in one you, you just you, there's only certain items in certain locations and then you pick those up and you got them and you're great you know and that's mm-hmm. it that's that's the playthrough that's what you did so in this one me not picking up stuff is great but we just have to cycle back through again so we'll we'll yeah. do an area all the way through with Tom and then do it again with me. <laughs> like there was a situation where like we went to the first bonfire, we got to the second bonfire 
and I died. And Tom was like, well, I have to go back for you. At the first bonfire, I'm like, no. So I had to like speed run this area, <laughs> like dodging all the enemies and like zipping through, which I think was fairly successful. I didn't it have this. good. It looks great on stream. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. It's so, like I speed run, dodged everybody. And like, I finally got back up to Tom. I'm like, yep. I'm here. <laughs> like, and so like, I launched the fire, but like, I need to go back through myself and actually get all that cool shit that Tom picked up. Like, get more of the, you know, the fires, the the embers and stuff like that. Because I only have the one. The, I think the biggest issue that we're gonna we're about to run into is that we're just not gonna have any embers, and we just can't be human. So in Dark Souls, yeah, you have to be human to summon people. You mm. uh, or you can't play together. So we're at a point now where it's like we have maybe one more ember left. So if we get ganked by a random dude early on. We're, we're basically fucked. Yeah. That, so, like, I don't know. It, it, maybe late game is a better time to have that. But, maybe, but like, I remember them being so rare before. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I remember, I remember just having the hardest time finding humanity in the other ones. And then, I, like, at some point, you you know, you can find a good amount of it, but it's more late game. But early game, there's not a lot of it to be found unless you know exactly where it is. Because it's, like going to be over on a corpse that you have to dive to off a cliff and if you catch it you got it but if you don't you die you know like there's a bunch of stuff like that and there's a lot of risk reward so in dark souls one i believe humanity controlled your luck so if you had you can use humanity on yourself and increase this counter and if you had a bigger counter you had a better chance of finding gear but when you die you drop your souls and whatever's in that counter right there so you have to go back so you're really risking a giant a really valuable set of items to increase your drop rate for better gear. So it's a really cool risk reward. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. We're, we're going to have to figure out something. There were areas in Dark Souls 1 that, um, that let you farm for humanity, but right. I don't know. I don't know of any in Dark Souls Three. So I'm we might try not to spoil we, anything from a gameplay standpoint. We may need to do something along those lines, like maybe farming something somewhere so we can get some. I know that there was like, like in, in, there was those little humanity things in uh, Dark Souls Two. Was it Dark Souls Two? Is under like there's like little sprites that were floating the, around uh, the human effigies. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, there's always something somewhere. Oh, so okay. So cool. We, that's what we'll do. The, um, Dark Souls <laughs> says that we can get him at the merchant at the shrine, which is perfect. If that's if that's okay, all it cool. is, then I don't mind. Like we can, yeah, uh, we're, like, done. We're, we're done with that. That's not even. It's a non-issue. The is averted. <laughs> not issue at that point. I just concerned. Let's, let's say that. Yeah. But I'm having a great time. I'm excited. Just so add. if uh, if you want to check that out, stay tuned to the 72 Pin Connector stream. We're going to try to get in as much Dark Souls as possible, mostly because we want to play more Dark Souls. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, Josh, I do have to ask you, you've been playing a game uh, with some people online that actually is hugely popular right now. Um, and I looked at it and I'm like, eh, 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 I, <laughs> it doesn't look like it's for me. Tell me about Fortnite. All right, so Fortnite is like a Borderlands meets like Left 4 Dead survival, um, hmm. and, and Minecraft like all at once. That's what you get. Hmm. So not necessarily Minecraft, more like a Seven Days to Die, but we'll we'll get into that. So basically, you are a a survivor in some in some regard, and you have uh, you have to build a base. And when you're done building the base, you know monsters come after you. And you you know like zombies, so it it it'll, it's really like the the characters are very cartoony. It's very like mm-hmm. kid friendly. The the graphics, uh, but the gameplay is really good. Um, one of the biggest problems with games like Seven Days to Die, Minecraft, and all that is you build this epic base. You like so you spend all this time. You build this base. You're like, oh my god, I built this base. It's great, but you can't do anything with it. Uh, like you know like you're not you know you can build this giant castle but what are you defending like you build this you know this crazy elaborate fort you know up in Mm -hmm. the mountains but like you know what's it there for you know in this game Mm -hmm. you know you 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 get way you get waves of zombies like that's what was fun in in like left for dead there was a mode called survival and the and the zombies would come at you in waves and you try to like defend and survive and then when you die you know you die or you can you know win the round 
Um, and that's right. and that's fantastic. But you don't get to build anything. You don't build defenses. You know, you just sort of yeah. exist, and you just like, oh, we're gonna hold up in the bathroom. You know, like <laughs> you know, yeah. there's nothing, there's nothing there for you. <laughs> but in this mm-hmm. one, it's um, you know, there's like this big shield that's being generated, and and your 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 goal is to build this base and then go find survivors and bring them to you. So, mm-hmm. um. So it does a great job about like kind of blending these two concepts together. You're going out, you're you're foraging for items, you're foraging for, you know, blueprints for your weapons, you're looking for wood and and uh brick and, you know, and steel and trying to scrap things and then make your base, you know, make it better, make mm-hmm. it stronger. Um, but at the same time, you're doing the same thing for your guns and other and other aspects of you. So it's very crafty. But that mundane crafting experience gets broken up with this really, really fun shooter portion of it where, you know, they send a few zombies after you and you and you deal with it. Uh, right now, we're pretty early stages of it. So we're not like super deep into it yet. Like there's but they keep introducing new enemies every time we do a level. So I think what it feels like is we're still in like a semi tutorial esque phase of it. So like mm-hmm. the first the w- what it seems like we're doing is the game's broken into two sections. The first section is your main base. You have a main base, you name it and you build it and you build upon it and you you're restricted, semi restricted into a little area mm-hmm. and you build your base. And then at some point the shield expands. You get to upgrade the shield and and the shield expands and then you can build in a bigger more spread out area. So it's pretty cool, right? Hmm. Um yeah. So you do that, you survive the onslaught. And then after that, you're like, okay, time to search for survivors. So you then venture off into different areas and you look for survivors. And that's the cool part about it. It says now you're building not on your main base, but on a separate area. And you're building up like just you're, you're, you know, into you're in a little city and you're running through the city and you're like, you know, breaking down cars and walls and, and like looking at for unique stuff and, it's great because it's not super mundane like it's not like it's not just like a a flat surface like and and you're and you're walking through a very like obviously pre-generated city like it has character the city feels Mm -hmm. lived in there's there's stuff you can go into the houses and there's like you know magazines on the ground and you know if you break open a floor there's like a basement down there like oh cool what's in this basement and then like you (laughs) you know you start exploring these little houses and stuff it's quite Mm -hmm. good and at some point it will be free they said so right right now it's pay to play but uh it will be free for everyone uh in 2018 so um, so this is this, interesting so this is an early access game or is this right it's an early access game and i'm okay. so hesitant on early yeah. access games i've I, I just can't tell you how hesitant i am but i started right. watching some streams of it and i'm like this looks like something really good yeah and, and i'm I took watching a, the gameplay trailer and it, it seems like there's a lot to it it doesn't right. it doesn't look at all uh, it's overly simple or incomplete. It looks like it's a pretty exactly ex- that's, uh, experience. That's what I looked at. So when I, when you buy crafty games, crafty games is like the cringiest thing you can buy on early access. There's <laughs> no if you want to get totally yeah. screwed Everything. out of your money. If you want to get totally yeah. screwed out of your money, buy a crafting game. <laughs> you know, like yes. most of the time, like, most, like Rust or Ark. Uh, or uh, another one of those seven days to die um <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, no like like usually you, it's just the update period is so slow the first time you mm-hmm. get it on launch it's just like it's, there's nothing there and you, and you try but there's really like there's always something missing like, oh wouldn't it be cool wouldn't it be cool this is a totally complete yeah. game the crafting yeah. system exists the the guns are all random it's very borderlandsy like there'll be like mm-hmm. a, a different scopes on certain guns there'll be different stocks on nice. certain guns and then once you get that schematic you can upgrade that gun you can't change and modify the gun like you like that's what i wish you could do like take a piece off of it like maybe like put a different scope on it but like the gun you get Mm -hmm. is the gun you get but it's very rng for the gut what you're going to get out there in the wild there's also Mm -hmm. multiple heroes that you get to play as uh there's four different classes um 
like a soldier character, a, a builder character, one that's more about like foraging and then just a random ninja, I guess why not? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's like sprinkled that yeah. on, like just, sprinkled yeah. that on there. And, but they all play the <laughs> same, like the, not really the same, but like they all play, they all have the same things. You can use the same guns with them. You can use the, uh, you know, you can build the same with them. Is they have different, you know, they just have different uh, superpowers, like special abilities, you know. Okay. So we can go so, into that another time for sure, but yeah, yeah, it's really it's really deep. They they really it's it feels very very complete. So Dark Soul Invader says in the chat that they throw a lot at you at right at the beginning, and it, it seems completely overwhelming. Did you get that feeling playing with it? Did it seem like there's just too much to take in at once? If you're trying to get good at it, I can see it being really overwhelming. But if you just go through each level by level. And you just open up the quest log and go through the quest log from the top to the bottom. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Like it is overwhelming. I think they should really block out some of these like prompts and things for you to do because some like a lot of the stuff that I ran into early um, was like, oh, I don't know what this is. I don't know what to do here. It's not totally clear. You know, a lot of right. it's just text information, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh uh, shit. Like I don't know, but like. A lot of stuff you're, they don't even give you early on, so you have to actually just play through the story in order to get those things. Like, oh, I really mm. want to be the ninja. Well, you can't. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> have, like you're like I'm gonna do everything I can to Bad understand from ninja school. Right, like I'm gonna do everything I can to understand this graph, this skill tree, in order to understand when I get to become a ninja. Like, no, nah, just ride it <laughs> out. Just just go in, do the quests front to back, and you'll get everything. You'll 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 like you'll have a better pickaxe, you'll have a better, you know, weapons, and you'll start to mm-hmm. understand how the game's supposed to be played, how it develops. But there's just so much stuff there that mm-hmm. you can get overwhelmed. I can totally see that. So the thing is, is, the way we were playing it is very lulzy. We're just going in there, having a good time, laughing, joking, building stuff, not trying necessarily to do like the achievements that are in there, but just kind of enjoy what right. the game is. And at that point, you know, they just sort of hand it all to you at some point. Like they just see, they just sort of give you the keys to the castle and you just get to go and have a good time. Hmm. Interesting. Nice. So would you so give I, it a, a a recommendation? Would you say, Hey, that's worth the money so far. Yeah. So far I'd say yes. Uh, there, there's a lot in there and it, it is, it is daunting, but I, I, I think getting in there and enjoying it, I mean, oh my God, it's perfect. It, this is one that I would recommend for an early access dive in, give it a shot. There's a lot there. There's a lot to play. Nice. It's, it's a full game. It's absolutely mm-hmm. a full game. Nice. That's good. So tonight, uh, this week has been really light on news, really light. Uh, good news, though. Um, the International is getting started. So if you want to catch the group stage, it'll start next week. If you want to catch the finals, it's the week after that. We're going to try to go towards Key Arena um, as as 72-pin connector. Uh, I know Irk and I are uh, in the physical area of where TI is going to be. So uh, stay tuned. We should have more details next week. But uh, nothing nice. concrete as of yet. Um, but in the news, um, Dota 2 is welcoming new players, which is really nice for a game that's yeah. been out for years <laughs> and years. <laughs> um, it's like, oh, maybe, uh, maybe we should work on this a little. <laughs> yeah, so, so if you've ever played Dota, um, you know that um, you should, you know, like go jump off a bridge or you suck. <laughs> Or any, really any combination of those things. Um, never play this game again, uninstall, remove your Steam account, you know, stuff like that. You know all of the instructions to have a great Dota 2 experience. Um, so Valve is trying to change that. Um, the first feature they're introducing is a change to the hero selection system, which I think is going to be very interesting for people who use Smurf accounts. Um, for your first 25 games, uh, there will be... Uh, 20 heroes to pick from out of the pool of 100 plus heroes. Um, oh. and, they're, and they're doing that because there are 20 heroes uh, that they've seen are very helpful for getting new people up and into the game. Uh, Dota's got a giant skill gap. 
So there mm-hmm. are heroes like Lich that I play, because I love Lich. And, and you press Q, and you, you blow up a person, like, with some ice stuff, and he's <laughs> got some armor, and he's got, like, a bouncy frostball thing. It's cool. He's great, and he's really easy to use. Um, and then there are characters like Invoker, where you have to memorize a spreadsheet of spells and hit your buttons in a perfect order and mm-hmm. then invoke them and know how they play off of each other. And even more crazy people where you're managing multiple heroes in the same or multiple uh, characters of the same hero in the same match, trying to do it all at once, StarCraft style. Um, so they're, they're going to try to narrow this down to here's here's your most simple. Um, nice. They're all, they've also introduced a feature that matches brand new players uh, against players with consistently high behavior scores. So not only do you have MMR in Dota 2, you also have a hidden behavior score of how nice. much of a prick you are. <laughs> um, so so if, if we're going to look on the bell curve of, you know, here's, here's where you know, good people are and here's where bad people are, the Dota skill cur- bell curve goes about here. And everyone, <laughs> everyone is just shit. Uh, that, that's actually only a slight, slight exaggeration because the Dota 2 community is, I've said, one of the worst I have ever seen in all of gaming as far wow. as the treatment of new players. Yeah. Um, so Valve introducing new players um, to people who have been generally good to the community is great. Uh, it's going to mean that people, you know, will play great and love the game for the first 25 games and everything after that will be absolute shit. Oh, that sounds uh, hey, fantastic. Those, so. those first 25 games will be great. Um, <laughs> so what reality, you're saying is, as you're getting to know each other, uh, th- it's on its best behavior. And then over time, gradually, boom, there's a red flag. And then yeah. boom, there's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh no. There's red flags everywhere. This, this, isn't like the game I thought I knew. this isn't the game I thought I once knew. It sounds like but a really dysfunctional 20... relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this, this means the you know, 13 to 25 hours of this game uh, mm-hmm. will be with you know, a very limited hero selection. It'll be with people who are deemed to be With the 15 people decent. who have a high yeah. behavior rating. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm not on that list. <laughs> a nice close... T- hey, you guys were a team overly nice, so we you, were. Should, you guys should be the entirety of the behavior, <laughs> the high behavior list. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's it's me just and you. And, Irk and that's yeah, it. That's it. Yeah, that, that's it. Like, we're so getting- well, we're going to have you play with the 72 pin connector guys, because we know they don't flame too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, Except for uh, RS, RS is toxic. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Um, (laughs) So if you wanted to check out the international is the biggest esports event in gaming today, Uh, as far as prize pool, as far as watchers, uh, it's fucking massive. It is the esports event. And hopefully that'll change and become Rocket League at some point. because That's generally easier for people to watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you know nothing about Dota 2, uh, check out the newcomer stream. There are casters specifically casting against people who don't know who invoker is um what your armor or what turn rate does like it's it's specifically built for people brand new to dota 2 check it out it's great it's not patronizing um you can totally watch it with people who have never played dota and they'll sort of get what's going on okay this guy killed this guy with a laser because he wanted to got it (laughs) um so check that out. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot more TI news uh, as it happens. Um, other than that, uh, speaking of esports, did you guys see that Battlegrounds is getting an esports tournament? I, yeah. yeah, they that, have. Uh, yeah, and not a small esports tournament. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a pretty big prize pool for such a new. <laughs> Esport? <laughs> well, I mean, three hundred and fifty thousand dollar prize pool. Jesus. It's it's popular. That's I, huge. It's it's actually I watched someone cast one of these. There's not a lot of tournaments. I haven't seen a lot. There was an invitational mm-hmm. that I saw yeah. that we watched, and that was it, it was quite good. It was actually not as bad as I thought. The sucky thing about mm-hmm. watching uh, uh, battlegrounds is that it's really hard to tell who's where, and then it's really hard to follow yeah. each like event as it goes on because always something happening There's so many people that it's hard you wouldn't be able to keep track of like the whole thing yeah like yeah you're watching a tournament you're like oh oh my my guy is still in there like my favorite streamer yeah. is still 
playing in it <laughs> and like and then there you're watching some other fight like, oh this is great like like oh and we're down to 20 like where did where did he go is he not and he did he die he died yeah. oh he died and everyone's like oh, yeah he died and I call, oh. yeah like i missed that whole portion of it so mm-hmm. um that's a bit unfortunate but as far Dude. as watching it, it's not it's it's actually quite good it's really interesting to watch battlegrounds from like a top-down perspective seeing where everyone drops and seeing how they navigate mm. the map it's actually really interesting hmm do we know if they're going to i mean they're gonna have to right if they're going to fix spectator mode before this tournament <laughs> uh i mean they do a monthly update they do a monthly yeah. update every month and every month it gets exponentially better the updates they've they've been putting out every single time have improved the game significantly um mm-hmm. i mean i i wouldn't doubt that they would be looking at that they're a pretty good developer they kind of seem to have a pretty good handle on how to the best approach so far mm-hmm. um i mean if they don't i mean i don't know <laughs> i don't know what to say beyond that they they have to yeah it would be unfortunate but i mean i think people are okay with it they know they know what they're gonna see <laughs> at that point but that's a huge yeah. amount of money right yeah so I'm, I'm wondering if this i'm wondering if battlegrounds is going to uh, stick as an esport one thing that kind of concerns me about it is there's a lot of rng to that game yeah a lot of it's, it's randomized all the loot ton. is randomized the the way the circles close in are randomized uh i think it leaves a lot up to chance for something to be you know for so much money to be on the line it really does on and an it, esport uh, competitive agree. event uh, I, I really 100% agree. And then people talk about that a lot, especially once you get down to the final circle. Like uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the streamers are fine with losing. You know, they're good. They're really good, mm-hmm. but they're fine with losing in a lot of situations where like, oh, well, right. you know, the circle put me over there. I had to run across an empty field. They're all like on top of a mountain, you know, like mm-hmm. that, that circle I got is exactly how it told me I was going to lose. What they do yeah. is they do three rounds it's still RNG, but they give you three rounds and then whoever ranks the best, you know, within those three yeah. rounds is the, you know, the winner. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you just got to play your cards as best you can. I mean, right. some people like, if you watch like this or something, they'll, they'll, they'll orchestrate their movements throughout the entire map based on, yeah. you know, where they anticipate the circle going, you know, or, or worst right. case scenario yeah. situations, but it's still not great. You know, it's yeah, still it's not, very RNG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's RNG, but obviously, you know, there are going to be great players that know how to kind of circumvent the the limitations of if things don't go their way as far as the random generate uh, generating things go. But a game like that, I think, it takes a lot of games to rank somebody because of those RNG right. moments. You know, exactly. it's not. You know, exactly. the better player doesn't always win. No, you're 100% it just, right. It, the better yeah. player does not always win. No, the and player that played the best doesn't even always win. But and with that, only three games to it, kind of rank these people, I'm wondering how, how accurate that's going to be. Well, that's... I think, I think you're this, right. is another, you, this is another jump on the esports craze, right? Mm-hmm. We, we're seeing it with Battlegrounds now. We saw it with uh, Call of Duty, with every Halo that's come out. We saw it with... Um, fucking nintendo with arms and splatoon oh god look we're esports now guys we promise can we get some of that sweet esports cash is that a thing can we just like dip into that account (laughs) yeah i get why they want to try it and it's an interesting experiment but you know run some fucking like private private tourneys for like a case of beer or something right grow up like like fucking quake did or dota did try it and see if it's actually gonna work before you throw down you know, over a quarter million dollars into a prize pool for a tournament that could be decided by virtual dice. Mm-hmm. Right, it's Because, true. you know, if, if this drops into school and there's, you know, a red dot scope and a pistol and two cartons of ammo, he's going to be fucking pissed, right? Right. And if mm-hmm. that happens twice in a row, if that happens three times in a row, I can mm-hmm. easily see the RNG stealing this tournament. And for mm-hmm. it, this could just true. be a lottery. It is. And it, it, also depend, really it depends a lot on where people drop immediately too, because yeah. you know, it to an extent, a good player is going to be able to push past the bad RNG because they know what they need to do. They know how to play safe. They know how to get the loot they need. They know where all the hot spots are for loot, as far as the the generating and, and stuff is concerned. Yeah. But let's say this drops in school, and there's nothing but a 
pistol and a red dot sight, but then you've also got Summit 1G drops at school. And, you know, depending on how far the, the really, really top tier players drop, you know, it, it might not even matter how well you can play through that. Well, that's what, well, that's what, that's okay. So the reason it's so popular is because of that. And, and they've mm-hmm. talked about this extensively is that the reason PUBG is so popular is because an inferior player can win. Anybody mm-hmm. can win yeah. a chicken dinner. Yeah. Anybody we've, can win. We've it. We've won. If we can we, win, yeah, <laughs> we can win. Anybody can win. 10. Right. That, I've gotten into the top ten. Right. Yeah. So, right. That, that should tell anyone that skill is not really a part of this no, game. Ex- well, well, I mean, it is. It's a huge factor. It, it, it really is. is. There's a lot. There's a lot of skill that goes into it, but there's also a lot of luck that can really yeah. take a oh, like an okay player and and have them mm-hmm. win like any game against like even a lobby of mm-hmm. really really good players. It's right. just it, it's just how how the you know. How, how's your circle looking? Did you, you know, it's, it's more like the better you are, the the better percentage of the chance that you might win. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Like you know, if you look on the the global leaderboards, yes, the best players are going to have way higher win rates than everybody else. Right. But if there you are... slap us in one of those tournaments, there's still a chance, a better chance of us winning that than if you slapped us to the international. There are fantastic multiplayer games out there. People fucking love that everyone's put, you know, thousands of hours into Uh that they adore that would make really shitty esports. I think PUBG is one of these. Right. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, if they adjust some of the RNG, like especially like the circles and where those go, uh, maybe Mm -hmm. maybe adjust some of the gun drop rates and still kind of like finesse that around. You know, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it's, maybe it, it really has some validity as, as, uh, as an esport, especially if you make it more like, okay, well, this is roughly where the circle is going to end up. Let's, you know, mm-hmm. play your game around that. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe not as so dynamic. Maybe it has like a percentage motion, you know, it's like, instead mm-hmm. of it going from, you know, right here to all the way up here, you know, like if this is, you know, that's your circle. Yeah. You know, th- there's always, there's always something you can do. You might be able to pull yeah. a little bit of the RNG out. It's just a different kind of game. You know, it's hard. Yeah. It's as hard long as to everybody tell. going to it understands that. You know, yeah. If, that, if the I players are going to get mad when they lose because of some, you know, unfortunate luck, right? I mean, you know, why not throw money to somebody that wins it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll have to see. It'll we'll be boot. interesting when it happens. Um, but giant prize pool, PUBG. We'll see. Um, I am interested, um, like Dark Souls Invader said, um, the game is still pretty glitchy. I would like to see a, a nice, you know, tournament version like they yeah. do for esports today, where they're like, hey, it's got a whole lot of bug fixes in it and not a whole lot yeah. of features. Um, so, after we'll the see. game actually releases. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think that is all the news we have this week. Um, yeah, it's been really light. So the international next week will be around. Um, I'm going to get uh, TKO. It's a t-shirt building game for the Jackbox Party Pack 3 post stream. So after we close this, wait a couple minutes for me to get set up and get another drink. Look at this stuff. This is sad. Empty. <laughs> I, I need to get more whiskey. Um, and then we'll be starting the post game stream. All you need is an internet connected device. You don't have to buy anything. So stick around. Even if we fill up the player slots, you can play as a member of the audience who does swing the vote? So please, for the love of God, jump in the game. It's so much fun. <laughs> um, but uh, if you wanted to subscribe to the podcast or check previous stuff, download shit, whatever, 72pinconnector.com. Uh, that's the number seven and two. Uh, if you want to hit us on Twitter, it's at 72PC Podcast because 72 Pin Connector was taken. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you wanted to find us on YouTube, and especially if you wanted to see Josh and I die over and over and oh over God, again yes. in Dark Souls 3, uh, 7 2 pin connector on YouTube. Uh, if you wanted to send us an email for some reason, or if you got like cool <laughs> forwards from your grandmother you wanted to send her away, fan mail <laughs> at 7 2 pin connector.com. I get those personally, so, uh, you know. <laughs> But uh, that's about all we've got tonight. Thank you for tuning into 72 Pin Thanks, Connector. Guys. Stay tuned for the postcast game. And uh, we're out. Mm-hmm.
Game on. Bye, everyone. See you guys.